Hello and welcome. Hi, friends. It's good to see you again. Welcome to another episode of The Trading Desk with me, Joshua Thanos, and my. Ah, oh, you didn't come down. And my I'm good Jason friend, Maine. my very good friend, Jason Maine. What's going on, guys? Welcome back. Uh, it's Thursday. Yeah, it is. Not That's quite right. Friday. It's yeah, basically it's my Friday, though. Your, your Friday. Uh, I got to go to work tomorrow. But then again, I'm uh, always at we're work, always though. at work, yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, welcome back. Thanks for uh, logging in on another Thursday. Um, we're going to... Hopefully you're all as excited a, as Jason Maine. Kind of make this a uh, little bit of a shorter show, hopefully, today. Really? Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, oh, I don't know about that. No? You're going to run it up? We'll see. All right, well... All right. I got, I, I got some free time till about half an hour from now. Other than that, I'm going to start uh, invoicing. Gotcha. All right, but, cool, uh, man. So um, we're on – this is our third week doing the uh, the top uh, the top viewed watches on our website to see if that, you know, gives us an overview of the market. And uh, I think we got some interesting results this week. Um, but before that, we got wrist shots. shots. That's right. Jay, what do you got on the wrist today? I actually have a uh, different watch this week. In the last couple weeks, and you guys. Oh, look, it's a Rolex. You guys know my uh, ceramic non date. That's the uh, Rolex 114060. I am uh, wearing this in anticipation of something I've been waiting for a very long time that's uh, finally in the works. So uh, that's well, that your be, Explorer, too. Yeah, the Polar Dial. I've uh, been waiting for that for a long time, as you guys know. Um, so I got to go ahead on that. It's, it's coming soon, hopefully. Uh, you so I took so this out of the wrist box. Uh, I took this out of the box today. Uh, put the Panerai away. It's this. I haven't worn this in almost a month, and it it's was nice. just time to bring it back. And uh, so you guys, uh, you know, I like this quite a bit. It's got some, some love, some wear, but just very versatile watch. Yeah, it's a good watch, and it's gone mm -hmm. up in value since you bought it. Yeah, which is always a, good. Always a plus. Yeah. Unlike the Panerai. <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever. All right. And uh, so on the wrist today, I have something that you guys saw probably a while ago. Something I've been really excited about. And I haven't worn it. It's been actually in the watch box in Florida, which now I basically have a three watch collection that I take with me here to Philly, and then I leave the rest in Florida. So I decide what I'm going to take each week. And and uh, I got the this is the uh, Santos, the new Santos 39 and a half millimeter, new redesign, um, the uh, white dial. They do make a blue dial as well, and they make the uh, the chronos that uh, we haven't seen yet. We haven't got our hands on. This one, I have it currently on the bracelet. I was wearing it in Florida over the weekend on the uh, the leather strap, which is super comfortable. And uh, it just gives it a different dynamic. Um, you know, at a $6,600 retail, um, it's hard to find more watch for less money. Uh, you probably don't have to pay full retail for this watch if you're looking for it. Um, Pre-owned, they hold good value though, it seems. And uh, here, let's just show for those who are uninitiated. Let's do the close up again. So the cool thing about this watch, besides just the look and, you know, which I love and, you know, now the new thinner case and the, what is it, the cabochon? The cabochon. The blue sapphire. Um, the technology that they put into the bracelet of this watch is fantastic. So ejecto if you know, bracelet. Ejecto bracelet, but a different kind of ejecto bracelet than what we're going to talk yeah. about later. So if you're familiar with Cartier, see that, how easily that came off. Um, the, uh, the Roadsters had a similar mechanism. Um, so basically like a little, uh, a little, uh, tab that you'd pull on the roadster in order to dislodge the bracelet and swap it over to the strap. Um, so they, they changed the way they, they, the, the, the mechanism, yeah, the actual interface, right. But the, the process is the same. And then what they did, they took it one step closer. So let's get one more close up here. So what they have is they have these little, I don't know if we can see it on the inside here. Yeah, there you go. You can see it. Damn, that's some good camera work. So you can see right along the edge here, they have these little hidden buttons that if I press it, the screws are, let's see if I can get my finger down there. The screws are spring loaded. Okay, hold on. Sorry guys, this is really painful. So you can see how they popped out. So I can grab one, yank it out, and now I can take the links out with no tool, which I mean, I think that is a very underrated and technology. The, I mean, and what other are, brands have this? They're captured as well, so you can't right. lose them. Right. You can lose the links, which I have already. <laughs> Pro tip: Don't uh, when you're at and you're at dinner drinking wine and your wrist wrist swells a little bit, just deal with it. 
you know. Or no, actually, it was the opposite. My because it was too big on my wrist, so I took a I took a link out and I thought I put it in my pocket. Um, well, to be fair, you were you was had it sized for up here. You went down to Florida, right? Temperature shift. So yeah, you but probably felt. I, I don't know. But, I, I'm trying to remember the situation. Whereas I had to take a link out and I put it in my pocket, and that link's gone now, Jay. So I you found it. I thought your wife found it. No, no, <laughs> it's got no. I, I had to go back to the watch box since uh, I think I had three extra links from the original bracelet, which was go. nice. But now I only have two. Um, but besides that, the watch is really nice. Um, it's a great everyday wear. It's good, you know, in a rotation. It's it's a nice watch if you don't want to have to wear like a date just. So it's a good alternative for a date just if you don't want to be as flashy and have people know that you're wearing a Rolex. You want to wear something a little bit different that's also, you know, not going to be at, at a really high price point. Um, very comfortable. It works well. It doesn't, don't wear it in the water. It's, you know, it doesn't have a screw down crown. Um, but it is a nice everyday watch. The bezel is polished, and mine is no longer polished because I beat the hell out of it already. Uh, but it's an easy fix. I already talked to some more of our finishers in the office. They said this would be like you know a pretty easy. Fix. Yeah, it's they a watch it that like again. you knew full ahead of time with that with the two tone high polish that was going to happen. So yeah. it's not like it's it wasn't a a disappointing. Watch. Yeah, exactly. I, it wasn't a watch that I was planning on buying to sell. So I really don't care about the condition as much. I just I really like to watch my my wife likes it too. It's a little too big for her wrist, but she said she would consider the thirty eight millimeters. So if we truly she has a Ballon Blue yeah. that she wears at thirty six, um, the thirty eight millimeter um, uh, Santos that they have as well would be good for her. So if we truly wanted to have matching watches, which I don't know, it's it's kind of corny, but it also so it kind of excites me. My wife is interested in having yeah, a matching no, watch sure. with me. So uh, you know if I could. If I, you know, I'm getting her into watches. So a lot of more. guys uh, on this chat who wish their wives cared about watches, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or, but it's also, it might be a double edged sword because uh, watches she, are expensive. When she knows, yeah, but so, so when the wife knows too much and yeah. she notices the new one, uh -huh. that's uh, that's where you can get yourself in trouble. Yeah, that's so. a big deal. So, all right. So that's wrist check, guys. Uh, whatever you guys are wearing, uh, one thing you guys never tell us what you guys are wearing yeah, on the wrist. Yeah, ask so, them in the, in the comments. So. Yeah. What are you guys wearing? Oh, look at that. You got some. All right. Guys standing up for the Explorer 2. We got a couple guys, uh, Black Bay 58. We've got... I like the Black Bay 58. Yeah, it's a cool watch. Uh, yeah. People like the Santos. A uh, couple other... Anything some, exciting? Some Vermont talk. Wearing his two-tone Santos... Wearing a Tudor mid Black Bay mid GMT. Where are, the, where are the turbines? Where are the paddocks, guys? Come on. <laughs> yeah, break out the Grubles. Right, the Gruble forces. So... Um, all right, so that's that, and uh, wrist checks have wrists have been checked now. So what's the, what are, what are, what's up next, Jay? What are we doing uh, next here today? So we were uh, kind of a kind of weird uh, conversation. We were literally sitting next to each other and said, "Do we even? What do we want to talk about on the show?" And somebody else walked up and said, "You remember when huge." watches that are dinosaurs now were, were cool and the values were oh yeah up there so we Back brought oj some, watley was, was yeah, shout out to the OJ. king of panerai we brought some uh some dinosaurs with us all right so oh, this or that is the next thing this or that yeah. all right do we have a graphic for that my friend please do oh look at that's fancy oh yeah look they got some, it right too some big uh some big watches Absolutely. why don't you go first i went first all right so Richard. today's this or that is interesting um we were looking for something yeah a little bit different we always do you know, we seem to have a hard time finding something different. And I think that this works. So we have watches that, number one, used to be hot, used to sell for, you know, pretty good money. And now a little bit tougher to sell, but are also, you know, uh, interesting pieces. So we went with large dive watches. So if you haven't noticed, 47 millimeter watches, not the most popular watches anymore, right? So, um, but here's a watch we'll start with, the Panerai. 364, where are we going? All right, hold on, I'm gonna wait for my camera, man. Don't trip over the wires, my friend. Put down the beer, please. All right. <laughs> All right, so this is a Panerai 364, stainless steel. I think this is a 3,000, uh, 2,500, so it's a submersible, 2,500 foot submersible. So anyone who's going to the bottom of the ocean can wear this watch, right? Or if you're in an action movie or Oh, look how dirty that crystal is, Jay. Hold on. Here we have a uh, cloth. Yeah. I got a sweater on. All right. It's a Panerai, too. If it was a paddock, I'd probably use the cloth. All right. Much better. So uh, we have a uh, 
a deep sea submersible 47 millimeter uh, 1950s luminar case so the if you if anybody knows panerai you know that the very first 1950s submersible was a pan 243 which is actually it's a 44 millimeter looks very similar to this watch uh the bezel's similar as well and it's a uh that was a very popular watch so once they once they were able to sell a lot of those they decided to make as many as possible so the 364 is, an, is one of many 1950 submersibles so you have a little bit of a cushion case you have a bubble crystal and you have a watch that is nearly unwearable for someone of my stature so i have a seven inch wrist I'm about six foot tall probably like 185 pounds jason oh actually it's actually not bad oh actually <laughs> it's not that bad uh, it's top heavy for me so you know, if you have an eight inch wrist, I think this watch is fantastic. If you have a seven and a half inch wrist, this watch is fantastic. Though I have a seven inch wrist. Look at that. It doesn't the lugs don't hang over. So now I'm starting to fall in love with it. Yeah, and turn it sideways. Look at the height. <laughs> it's a big boy. I mean, if you get into a fight, you can use it as a projectile. Or well. a shield. Right. And it has like a newer style strap on it too. Um this this strap, I believe, this so this one was originally on the five oh eight, which is the a, a, the um uh, ceramic version of this watch or similar version the the, the shape k shape is a little bit different um it's got a full polished buckle i don't believe that that's the way that this watch was sold yeah. but this is a nice way to sell the watch so it's i mean this watch at one time was like a seventeen thousand dollar watch pre-owned and market price now i think we have this watch listed for like just under 10 grand yeah um so there's there's value for sure in a watch like this go you know currently um but yeah so that that's a <laughs> It's a big Panerai. That is a large. That watch is as big as my head, man. Look at that. It's almost as big as my mouth, and I have a big mouth. People say. What you... I I didn't say anything. <laughs> oh, you're so nice, Jason. Why are you so nice on camera, but so mean to me out, outside? I don't know what you're talking about. See these guys. See, they don't they don't know the true Jason. Over here pointing weapons at me all the time. All right. So I literally so, uh, there's... do not get paid enough for this right now. <laughs> we don't get paid at all to do this. So um, so. This watch is the that for this or that today. There is a poll, so go ahead and uh, and vote. And I think honestly, as both watches being tough sales, I think this should win. So is the is the poll the worst of the two or the best of the two? <laughs> We're gonna see. I don't understand. Like, Let me go ahead and right. vote. Um, so vote for vote for so all watch. right. So going up against it is a watch that probably has yeah. a little bit more technology. Uh, though the movement is I don't know. The, I mean Panerai and Hublot. Movements yeah, they're similar, they're both right? uh, similarly. Basic, I would say. Cool. So, I mean, why don't you pitch Let's your watch? Let's take a look at this guy, if we get the camera guy. To uh, So, Pam, 364. Ooh, baby. Can we uh, can we talk about a 48-millimeter Hublot for a minute? <laughs> I mean, look at that thing. That's the uh This watch limited, was popular for about 15 minutes. Yeah, limited edition. Nah, this thing was this thing was cool for a What's few years. What's the retail years. on that? Uh... I don't know. Crazy expensive. Over twenty for sure. Yeah, uh, I remember when these were. So I don't think these That's ever. That's a four thousand meter. Four thousand meter, uh, so oceanographic, right. right? So forty eight millimeter. It's all titanium. The thing is a monster. Um, even even though it's titanium, because of its size, it still has weight. So let's see so yeah, the let's... thickness. Put them side by side. Don't scratch the crystals, Jay. Can we get a close up? Dude, that is thicker. Than yeah, this I watch. think this watch dwarfs. Here, turn it. Though the shape, I would say the shape Dwarfs actually that watch. the the shape and the way that the lugs camfer down that yeah. actually uh, wears a little this, bit lower. This or small sits on the, on the wrist. I mean, it, it's quite thick, but it sits on the wrist pretty well um, for a big watch. So if you if you want to wear, you know, I, I recently sold one of these uh, in rose gold, oh, and the guy was just like, I just want a the watch largest, can do most of. yeah, like the most obnoxious <laughs> uh, hublot that they make, and uh, it kind of fits the profile. So it's a simple dial. Um, it actually has like a uh, very good diver uh, read off. Um, so you got a crown guard that opens up, protects that crown. This has their, this was like one of the first pieces to have that quick release mm -hmm. uh, in the front, which became popular. These are selling. Well, uh, so the reason for that is that when, when you're diving and you have this huge hunk of metal on your wrist and you reach down to go grab some buried treasure and your arm gets caught because you have some huge silly watch yeah. on you, you can quickly release it and save or, your life. Or get it out of the shark's teeth. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. No, but um, so, you know, just big, giant, uh, limited edition Hublot. These, this is similar to the uh, Panerai price range. I think these are right around 10 grand right now. I remember selling these uh, in the 15s, 16s easily. Um, oh, I've sold one of those probably for 18 grand. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Again, a, we're asking sign of the times, right? Prices have come down on big pieces. 
um, kind of makes sense with uh, where everybody's going down to like the 40 millimeter, 39 millimeter pieces nowadays. Uh, 42 seems to be like the sports size now. Yeah. So like the top kind of makes sense. So you're seeing the price ranges come down, which to be honest, if you're you know, cash positive and you've always wanted one of these, it's it's a good pickup. It's certainly but, the bottom of the market on these. Yeah, I mean, uh, so that's my uh, this for this or that. Right, here, and, let me try uh, it on so you guys can have some context. Um, it's got some, uh, also it has a huge crown guard. So basically they're like, hey guys, let's, but the crown guard, that's only for the inner bezel, isn't that? Yeah. <laughs> but for the actual crown. Right. And there's no Both bezel. are screwed down though. But it makes sense. All right. So, all right. Again, seven inch wrist. Let me see if I can strap this baby down. It's got a cool sandwich buckle on it. it you know what? It's, <laughs> it's a big watch though. It's, it definitely is larger. I mean, but look at that. It doesn't hang over my wrist. I mean, so if I was a, if I was a larger human being, uh, if I was like over six three or so, I could probably pull this off. Um, I mean, it, it's a functional dive watch without a doubt. Uh, that wasn't running. Okay, it's running, so that's good. That's good news. It does have a rotating inner bezel, so you don't have to worry about the uh, the bezel moving, which is like you know that's why you have unidirectional yeah. bezels, right? Um, take it down to four thousand meters, which I don't even know what's what's down four thousand meters. The center of the Earth, right? It's China. I, think I would wonder China. if. I would wonder if it's even like uh, I don't think it's even functionally able to test. No, no, like, I don't think Hublot has the capability to test that. At so 4, I mean, meters. the watch is highly legible. It's like unbelievably legible. And if you're only gonna have one watch, it's not and you like watch. to dive, it's not that. <laughs> and you like to dive, it's not a bad watch. If you want people to ask you what you're wearing on your wrist, hey, what the hell is that? Certainly a good watch. It's so. I don't know many things that would that are going to give you more attention than a 47 millimeter Panerai submersible but that hublot for sure does it and yeah, maybe i can monster. see them like when they're designing that they put a picture of the 364 on the wall and they said outdo it make a watch more obnoxious than this watch and like this watch actually so the 364 is actually seems like somewhat conservative it has a helium release valve which is um super necessary i guess I like the, uh, I mean, I love the aesthetic of a submersible, but I just prefer it in like a PAM 24 or 25. Can you show how 25. people can steal that easily, by the way, too? Uh, this one's a little stickier than the newer ones, but so yeah. Here, let me put on the wrist and you take it. So this, I tried that earlier. This one's a, uh, a little bit aggressive, right. so it locks up pretty good. So the cool thing good. about this quick. I think those 48 millimeters are the springs teeth? are tighter. Than tighter the, or the teeth yeah. or whatever. So if you want to take this watch, so if you have a friend who wants, and you want to take this watch off the wrist, yeah, I'm telling you it's tighter than nah, it's. Most. I mean, it's loose. So right now the watch, the the strap is released. So all I got to do is a little bit of tension. There you go. And that easily comes off the wrist. So again, save your save your life when you're deep sea diving, um, or you know, eject a watch. Eject a watch. All right, guys. So you guys, I mean, they're both. Equally obnoxious. I per personally like the Panerai better. I think Jason might also. I think uh, I think I maybe I misunderstood or, or you misunderstood <laughs> the idea of this poll. I thought we were going with, uh, uh, you know, what's the more dinosaur watch of the pair? I think the Panerai is more relevant still. Yeah. So I mean, they're both Oceanographic so. is at uh, 20% right now. So I think uh, oh! maybe we, we both... All right. Agree. I'm not gonna, yeah, I think we knew going into this yeah. what was going to happen here. So both big watches. Uh, well, because if you're buy, our watchers hate, our viewers hate uh, uh, Hublot, I think. Yeah, we'll if you're going to buy uh, this, then uh, good on you. If you're going to, like, if I was going to buy something like a sub, I, I'd want a 24 or 25. That'd be. Yeah. Or which, the. Or the um, which are also come down, in, you know. The 791 is right the blue dial, yeah. right? I don't know why I'm usually good with the reference numbers, but you know, the 44 millimeter uh, submersibles are nice, but you know, if you're going to have a large Panerai collection, you have to, if you like Panerai and you're going to have a collection of Panerais, you have to have a 47 millimeter sub in there as part of their history. Um, you know, guys like Schwarzenegger and Stallone and, and Dolph Lundgren wear watches like this and they punch people in the face while doing so. So adds mass. They you probably, know, yeah, yeah. So. There's probably a little extra weight on there. All right, are we doing a uh, top five, or are we just gonna leave now? <laughs> no, nah, let's do top five. So, all, all right, right, guys. So keep voting in the poll. Uh, either the um, the Ublo or the Panerai. I think I think Ublo's the Panerai some hate in the chat. Is it bad? People yeah. are talking crap. I mean, listen. Uh, so, let's see here. This weekend, I'm so confused. All right, anything? Uh, I don't think there's anything. They just hate it just because it's an Ublo, though, yeah. right? 
He blows it says, dead. Hey guys, I just fun. picked up a Panerai Luminar GMT Ceramica Mint for three hundred dollars. Yes, three hundred dollars. Perfect. I'm wearing it right now. I'd like to get a bunch of accessories for it. Well, so when you say uh, you got one for three hundred dollars, you're talking about you bought a fake watch. Like we did a we did a review. If you guys go back, uh, he's talking about the Panerai four forty one. We didn't buy a, a an authentic one for for three hundred dollars. That didn't happen. Um, they do make fakes that are that are similar. You just, you just know you're wearing a fake watch, so it's like why why even why. But, um, all right, guys. So, uh, cool feature of this show this week, uh, that we're gonna, we're gonna continue on is our top five. So, you know, because we're, we have such a large, um, you know, we have a such, such a large presence in the market, our company does, we get a lot of views, like, you know, a couple hundred thousand every week, people looking at our website, clicking on different, um, listings. So we decided to compile a, uh, a list of the trending watches. We tried top 10, didn't work. It was just too long, right? I was getting bored. You were getting bored. So we're going to do top five, and uh, we're going to do a top five countdown. So what's the first watch? What's the fifth most viewed watch of the week? Oh, wow. All right. I'm so, surprised that's on the lower. I'm surprised that's on number five. Yeah? Well, I mean, I think that it's uh, from the last few weeks, I think that it actually it's like it's a pleasant surprise, right? So is that the blue dial? Yes, yeah, the okay. fifteen. Okay. So those listening on the podcast, we have it's a fifteen four hundred ST, which is now discontinued. This is the blue dial. So this is a watch that um, at one point was selling for below the seventeen eight list, but now with uh, the state of the watch industry and the um, and the fact that the AP basically went all in house, and this was a boutique only watch originally, but it was easy, easily accessible. Mm -hmm. So now it's just totally. Well, it's discontinued, boutique only, stainless steel, AP. So now from a 17.8 list, this is a watch that sells for high 20s. I think uh, the last one that we sold went for like $27,000. And right. dealers can't buy these watches from private owners for less than like 25 grand. Um, so that's a watch that is certainly sells at a premium. And now that it's been discontinued, I mean, it's just there's no retail at that right. point. So the, the number five most viewed watch this week was this was this uh, stainless steel blue dial AP fifteen four hundred? So it's a forty one millimeter Royal Oak. Um, last year, last week we did have a Royal Oak. It was a very low price. It was a quartz one. Right. I think it sold this week actually. That's possible. Actually, uh, I think the last two weeks we've done this, two two of the five watches have sold. So I yeah. don't know if that's just because. Uh, or as, as a result, they're being clicked on so many times that eventually, you know, they're well, going to sell anyways. Yeah. yeah. But um, or I mean, the show. But I'd like to think it's the show. But I mean, I would assume that the watches that were looked at the most have the highest chance of selling. I mean, that's all pointed this right. rate. So, so, but it shows. You know, we're trying to determine if this is an overview of the market. Which, so for the last three weeks, there's been a Royal Oak in the, in in our list. So makes sense. People want stainless steel Royal Oaks. Um, just surprised that that's the most expensive stainless steel Royal Oak you can buy right now, besides the fifteen two hundred two, which is probably a little over thirty. All right. It's a pretty so, watch. For the price differential, I like the black dial better. Yeah, I but, mean, I, I have uh, a viewer of the show. My buddy Shelby just picked up the black dial, and, you know, his his thoughts are exactly like, why am I going to pay seven eight $8,000 for a blue dial, which is— Which, in the right light, looks black anyways. Well, so like, sent, it's funny. He sent me a picture of it at an angle. I guess there's anti-glare on there. And I'm like, like, look, oh, blue. it looks a little bit blue. <laughs> Dude, wait, we saved yourself eight watch. grand. Yeah. Oh, but a black or a silver dial is is more wearable. It's less polarizing. So, like, if you like blue, or your, or you have a large enough collection to handle something like that, where you can wear a watch that at that price point in stainless steel every once right. in a while in blue, it makes sense. But I mean, it's not an everyday. I don't think. All right. So number four. Hey, what's that, Jason? That's a uh, actually really uh, really kind of clean. Uh, what is it? A one eight two three eight. That's right. Uh, so date eight. Yep. Hey, it's a go double buy, quick uh, date eight. Let's go buy a, a good amount of gold mm -hmm. for not a lot of money. Uh, well, it's a nineties right. piece too. Yeah, I mean, so it's it's. I mean, nice pickup, track dial. Uh, how can you go wrong with the Prezi? Yeah, it's an all gold, yellow gold President uh, Rolex President, thirty six millimeter. So this is this is hollow links, right? It's an mm -hmm. early nineties piece. Um, thirty six millimeter. I mean, so. If you think about a Rolex President right now, the 40 millimeters are going for what, like high 20s? Yeah, but they're so nice. <laughs> they are nice. White gold, green dial. Oof. That's really nice too. Um, or, but if you want like a, a current gen um, with the current technology for a 36 millimeter, you're you're paying more than 20 grand, or maybe even maybe like for a pre-owned one that's a little rough, maybe like high high teens. 
this is a watch that you can find in the low teens. So I guess it doesn't doesn't make sense. You think that that this is a highly viewed watch this week? Yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense when you start looking and people are looking at spending ten grand on a stainless steel watch, and it's like, oh, look, this is a president, and a president's a model people aspire to. Um, you know, it's not your first, generally not your first Rolex. Sure. So it's it's the I made it piece of Rolex, which is funny because Rolex is the I made it brand of watches. Mm-hmm. So it's it's kind of like the uh, you know the double uh, double, double pickup. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I think thirty six millimeters. Uh, if if you're a smaller guy, you could definitely pull it off. It's it's small. very traditionally that. sized. That's that's the traditional men's size. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, for There's me personally, nice I wouldn't I wouldn't. Uh, wear a 36 if it was my grandfather's watch Mm -hmm. i'd I'd wear it because you know it has a story to it but i wouldn't go out of my way to buy a 36 millimeter watch um but i i do uh, absolutely love the 40s but for sure and this is like this is a great unisex piece so um you know but if you want to talk about so you just touched on something if you want to talk about like the value proposition um so uh a stainless steel submariner a date submariner is what worth what 10 grand right now yeah okay uh a um a green Submariner is going to be basically the same price as this. Right. Okay. So, uh, uh, stainless steel Hulk Submariner you can get for thirteen to fourteen thousand dollars sure. currently, right? Or you can, and that's all hype essentially, right? I mean, that's like we can be totally honest about that. The market is the market, but that's hype. I think. I think uh, you know thirty percent of it is hype. The yeah. other is right actual. You know, so. The inflation, yes, but the watches. I mean, the watches. No, the watch is, piece. watch is nice, but I mean, it, it wasn't always hot, man. I, I know I've told the story before when I anything I over the watch for the weekend. anything over eight grand is is hype. Sure. Eighty five hundred bucks. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, the watch used to sell for like seven grand, yeah. and uh, you know, dealers like us would buy them for like six grand. I had a situation where I could have bought one for fifty five hundred dollars, wore it for the weekend. It was too green. Right. I mean, clearly, I'm a moron. I should have bought the damn watch. I would have made some money. Traded towards one that I liked. Yeah. Um. But so. Two things are happening. Number one, this watch is a value play, but also, so I would say that this is a watch that used to be able to buy. It used to be a little bit more expensive. It used to be like fifteen grand. So the fact that you can buy it for you know uh, less than that, say like thirteen to fourteen, shows that the money that normally would have been spent on a piece like this is now being spent on um, stainless steel sport watches. So I had this conversation with somebody recently. They had a Calatrava. That you know, whatever it's a, they, it had a forty-eight thousand retail, um, and you can buy them on the market in the high twenties now. And he's like, "Well, I understand. Paddock's supposed to be up. What's the deal?" And you go, "I go. Well, if you look around, you see what other watches are in the price point uh, where that used to be. Stainless Nautiluses, so fifty-seven twenty-sixes, fifty-seven twelves, um, and even like Royal Oaks, uh, Royal Oak Offshores, things like that are are now the price points have gone up where they've kind of." They've taken the place of so that money that normally would have been spent on, say, like the gold Calatrava or something like that, is now being spent on a stainless steel sport model for another brand or the same brand, which is now there's less buyers for that watch now that watch went down in value. Right. So well, I think you're just, seeing that. With it's this just watch. the market, uh, in a, in a nutshell, the market equalizing, right? Because there's the it, money it, has it, to yeah, come the money has to yeah. push out. You know, it's ebbs and flows like we always mm-hmm. talk about. So all right, so that's number four. What's the next watch? <laughs> Ooh, what the hell so we had this watch on when we had uh our boy uh spanish rob and as Hispanic a direct Roberto. result of that show more people are interested in this watch right. that's because we uh, just get so many views i absolutely have no idea why this watch is one yeah. of the most viewed watches are we but I'll, but jason i'm sure you have a great idea uh yeah it's uh just because of how odd it is well, what is i it? would say uh it's a uh Magnify and what do we call it? A uh, ant burning magnified <laughs> uh, tourbillon. Well, okay, but in reality, it's a Bernard Lederer. It's the Gargarian yeah. tourbillon, right? There's, there's what, like a handful of these things. There's maybe one of these that exist, I think. Yeah. But so it's a it's a uh, it's a rotating tourbillon. The whole dial rotates, and is it a GMT? Was well, the ro- the dial doesn't rotate? The outer magnifier rotates, right? Yeah, the, you lift up the magnifying glass. We we showed it on the show, and then you can run it around. So it's, it's a weird watch. I don't oh, know. Dude, things heavy as all hell though. Oh, it's like a two hundred fifty thousand dollar retail. Yeah. I think we had it on our website for around like forty or fifty grand. It's I mean it's pretty terrible, but it's actually super cool too. I mean at the same time, like if you're if you want something that's completely, you know, this is it's uh, bad and like how we talk about it, it's like bad in the best way. It's, it's a it's uh, budget right. gruble. This is not a res- representation, other than the fact that people are looking more at independence. So I'd say that 
if this signifies anything, it's that people are looking for more independence. You see a rise of, of Jorn first, Laurent Ferrier. You have Grubel Force. You have Debethune, um, Acrivia now. Like there's a lot of people who are looking to independence to spend their money for value, um, as opposed to going away from you know, as opposed to spending money on on right. like the hottest things around. So they're trying to jump on the next big independent. So maybe that that's that's a reason for this, or maybe it's just like yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is not the next. No. Hot independent watch. No. All right, what's the next one? Uh, here's here's something that doesn't surprise me. There you me. go. Hot independent. I think, yeah. Uh, That's a tourbillon. Yeah, actually, I have a uh, customer that wants this watch. So uh, you sell it. So $194,000, yeah. Yeah, it's a big boy. Uh, RM002, uh, tourbillon, yeah. rose gold, mm -hmm. rubber. Uh, it's an RM. So it's all the, all the hype right now, right? All the fire so here's is on the brand. Yesterday, mm -hmm. I was in D.C., and uh, I went to go meet with a client, that, a longtime client. He's been well, – he was from the Watch You Want day. He's been around for like 10 years for, with us. Really, right. really nice guy. So I visited him in D.C., actually got to see his his, uh, his collection in person, and he had an RM05 in white gold that like, he bought from us probably like seven years ago. I, like, I didn't even realize he had the watch. Right. And he asked me how much. He said he couldn't remember how much he paid for it, so I looked it up in our system. We were we had the watch listed in white gold, an RM05, which is actually like a pretty hot RM. We had it listed asking $25,000. That watch is worth more than $50,000 yeah. now. So, so clear, to say, clearly he's you gonna offered be trading, to buy it. Yeah. yeah, he's going to be trading it with me. But it shows you what's happening with RM. RM was looked at like like, like an Hublot back you know, five seven years ago well, now five years from now the magnifying watch is going to be there's going to be somebody else sitting here talking about you think so how we were dummies because that was a is that right why uh, are we going to fire you know. is that what someone else is going to sit there i mean i don't know maybe <laughs> so what are you trying but, to say <laughs> well, I mean, whatever dude we're foreboding here so um but it shows that you know now richard mill is hotter than paddock right but it, back then you couldn't give them away um and you know this is a watch now that it's this is on the smaller side the RMO2 which is much more wearable than a lot of the, like the RM11 which is like that's like that's the number one Richard Mill that's the flyback chrono it's a huge piece and now they have these huge notch cases which is still I can't believe they're still selling these watches yeah. when everyone else is scaling down our, uh, Richard Mill scaled up and still is going berserk it's on you know I think it's definitely a bubble um, yeah we've been saying that for five yeah, years though but. You know, they, I know, I know guys. Small, I know two or three guys that are like heavy in the RM game, or, mm -hmm. or were. Yeah, I'm talking about Brooklyn, right? the guy. Yeah, so I'm talking about the guy that if anybody's selling an RM, he knows about it. He's getting the phone call, and he got out of RM. Can he help he's, you sell this? Though, so he's like, you know, he has one left, I think, and he's like, you know, uh, I'm not hedging on the bubble right now. Okay. So I don't know. You know, you're not making it easy we'll for us see. to sell this thing, though. By the way. <laughs> Uh, you know, whatever. There'll be a buyer for this it's $195, watch. One hundred ninety-five thousand dollars watch. If somebody wants it, they're gonna buy it. If not, that's hmm. true. Yeah. So, all right. So, RM is in the top five. It's the first time. Top. Uh, yeah, first time top five. All right, cool. That's interesting. Maybe we're getting, uh, we're reaching a uh, a wealthier class of buyer if See. this watch is literally in our in our top five clicked, or people are just checking it. So, what's the number one watch? This is the last one, right? Yeah, number one. Hey, look at that. So Jason, what do you see when you when you look at your screen right now? Uh, that's a tough piece to buy and sell. So this is a, a 26 millimeter ladies. That's the uh, watch resident. Someone texted me the picture of that because they want to sell it. And we're gonna like all right, we're gonna have a conversation. Wow, it's a uh, it's like a nice ladies watch. It's it's all right. It's a tough piece to sell. Tiny so factory diamond. 26. It has the, uh, yeah, 26. Yeah, 26 millimeter. So this is very traditional ladies president. Um, we call it a roll of state chest, but it's uh, it's on a president bracelet. So yeah. ladies president is what they call this. So um, yellow gold, yellow gold dial. So this would be great as a matching piece with the uh, with yeah. the 36 millimeter. Uh, great, like if you want to buy like your grandparents, uh, a, a you know, matching anniversary gifts. I'm going to go ahead and say that the reason that that's the number one clicked piece is it's an all gold Rolex under 10 grand. And most people clicking on that think it's a men's watch until they read the description. Sure. That would be my, that my opinion. And then diamonds on a men's watch is more accepted nowadays, and it's what people are looking. You know, some guys are guess, looking yeah. for, mm -hmm. so they probably see that and go, "Oh, it's a blinged out all gold president. It's less than ten grand. I can get it." And then see it's twenty six millimeters. And they move uh, on. Hopefully, and then yeah. go and click on the other piece. Or is there any like holiday? No, I guess well, Valentine's Day just passed. 
uh, what's the next? There's no really big holidays coming up, yeah, right? Because usually, like, Our Lady's watches become very popular around the holidays. So, uh, interesting. Got a quick, uh, I guess, Pet Shop Boy. It's kind of a weird Instagram name. Um, is asking both of us if we have any thoughts on the new Tudor teaser from Instagram a few, a few hours ago. Did you see that or not? Well, here, I can look it up right now. Here, it's a, uh, time while I do this. It's a, basically a uh, big picture, like this big, and then in three millimeters of it is uh, a blacked out shadow of the Submariner. Uh, rumored Tudor Submariner. Oh yeah, there it is. So, oh yeah, for you sure. Can kinda, yeah, sub. you can kind of get like an outline of the inner bezel. Um, you know, it looks like a Tudor sub. I it think. Is. Yeah. No, I mean, great. It's, Guaranteeing it's them right confirming now. Yeah. that what we already knew they were confirming. I think it's exciting to see. You know, you don't get to see a whole lot of the watch, but I guess it's kind of cool to to know that it's for sure coming. We'll see what it looks like. I hope it is very vintage inspired, but. Yeah. Well, so if you look, if you look, uh, uh, was it four posts ago? They posted a picture of an actual vintage Submariner, mm -hmm. uh, a Tudor sub. So I think that. Well, we, so we. All right, guys. So that was the top five. Gives you, in my opinion, it's the same thing that we've been seeing. It gives you kind of an overview of the market. Each watch specifically, maybe not, but uh, for what people are searching for and finding, I think it makes sense. Yeah. Um. A, but in terms of this, and you know, we're gonna do. We'll probably end up doing. Like a pre-Basel show, um, which will just be about Rolex yeah. and Paddock, essentially. We'll try to find some other interesting things to talk about. But the uh, the Tudor sub, I think, is actually uh, – a that gives you a better idea of what Rolex is going to do too. I think they're going to redesign the sub as well. I feel like uh, the vintage-inspired Rolex release will be the Milgauss, mm -hmm. and the vintage-inspired Tudor release will be the sub. So. Yeah, but, but I think no, anyways, I think you're going to see a redesign that. of the Submariner either this year or next, and I think that they're going to scale down a lot of their watches, and they're going to moving forward are not going to be so big and bulky. Yeah, I think they're going to maxi away from case that. will probably come come away from standard yeah, well, the, issue. The lugs, the lugs are I think are going to be yeah. a little thinner. I mean, you see, like if you check like Rolex Passion Report, that guy's super um, up on everything, and he does a really good job of guessing at what's coming up in the pipeline. So um, I think you know he's. He's making a lot of sense, and I think he also mentioned on one of his posts that they're going to be discontinuing the, the Batman and the Hulk. And we're seeing, I mean, literally week by week, the value and price, uh, market price Just of the Hulk small and increments, the, yeah, but uh, the Batman are steady. going up. And but it's what's really interesting. And we'll touch this before we'll end the show because we're it's about to, we're about done here. Is that you're seeing right now because there's so many buyers in that price range. There's more dealers now than there probably has been in the last 10 years so guys who are getting into the into the watch trading market and um because like you know it, not everybody has fifty thousand dollars to buy it spend on one watch to sure. resell right there's a lot of guys who have like 10 grand right so if you have fifty thousand dollars you can do five transactions with that money now and uh and there's so much demand for these watches that um dealers are paying as much or more than uh than uh, customers for these watches right. because they're chasing. They want to. There's a, there's a run on picking up inventory. So a lot of time, right now it seems like dealers are the ones who are running up the price. Well, it's it's it'll be they're running to pick up the pieces because they know that the demand will follow. Yeah, I, and I, like if you want to have the business three months from now, you need you're going to need the pieces. So well, there. <laughs> uh, I think it's a, a more of a future bet. But I guess well, I mean, so I know dealers. I know a guy who's got twenty Batman's and he's just buying up as many Batman's as possible. And you know he's been buying them for two months, so he's actually been. They've all. I mean, he's already made money if you want to sell them today, but because he believes that once they discontinue it, they're gonna. It's a heavy. It's a heavy bet, you know. It's a heavy bet on the discontinuation. What it's doing is it's that you know. It's not the first time that like rumors have gone. It, you know, yeah. it wouldn't be the first time we've heard Bro. the Hulk's going away for what the last two years, three yeah. years. Probably four. And years. if if that was a situation where he bought twenty Hulks three years ago and then they don't discontinue it, like. You know, well, I mean, he so still made money over It's there. a heavy bet. Yeah, I don't but. think he's got that kind of cash. But, I mean, it's what's happening is that, like, speculators, so whether it be, like, actual guys, guys who truly do this for a living or guys who, you know, want to make a quick buck, those are the guys who are running up the value of these watches. And, you know, for us, you know, we're long-term better. So, like, we're, right now we'll pay market price and we'll sell them. Right. I mean, I, I think we have, I don't know, 10 pre-owned Batmans, and they're all – in the middle of set being sold. Right. Like somebody called me, uh, wanted a specific year. We didn't have that year, but I have another one and it's going to be sold today. So 
the demand is is insane um, from private collectors, but also from dealers. So. A lot of Batman. Yeah, man. So we'll we'll talk about this. It's uh, you know, it can get tedious, I'm sure, for our, our viewers and listeners to to hear about the same stuff over and over again. But so here's something to switch it up a little bit. Uh, Jason, you and I certainly just made uh, some. Uh, would you say a frivolous purchase? I yeah, would say. I thought we'd uh, give you guys a little bit of insight into yeah. something that's not watches and is us. Um, but yeah, we both uh, we both made an automotive purchase mm-hmm. uh, in, in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, one of us made a substantial, one of us made not so much. But so both thought, watches, both cars that we really really love and we yeah. wanted for a long time. So, so we which, thought we'd throw up a photo and talk about a little bit. One? We'll do a quick segment. I don't know which one's first. All right, we'll just stare into the camera. Kind of, uh, hey, all right, so that's my piece of shit. So this is a car that um, – so what you're looking at right there is a Honda SI. It's a Civic uh, EP3 uh, from 2003. So this is a car that when I was in high school um, – I graduated high school in 2005. So in 2003, this was a car I really, really badly wanted. I ended up getting like a regular Civic, Civic EX four-door. This is a car I badly, badly wanted. So this is kind of like the ugly stepchild of the Civic SIs. And uh, this one's bone stock. It has 138,000 miles on it. I paid nearly nothing for it. We're putting money into it to make it fun, but getting new suspension, doing a little th- a few things to the engine. I think I bought this. Is, uh, it probably has about like less than 100 horsepower right now. Once we're done with it, it'll certainly be faster. But um, if you guys know anything about this uh, this car, it's uh, this car was actually manufactured in the UK, which is kind of special. It's it a also, Type R. It's a Type R. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's uh, the K20 motor. And it, uh, the the shifter on this on this car is like basically in the dash. It's up high, which is something I really liked about it. It's just funky. It's something that that I would of course love. So it didn't cost me much it's, of anything. This is my kind of everyday when I'm back in Florida. It's like my my it's, or my weekend yeah, car. It's certainly a uh, a driver's car. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. little. It's nimble. Put it's it this way, fun little. That car cost me less than this watch. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but gives me oh substantially more fun. All right, and then Jason. What Jason? So I'm I'm not really a car guy, guys. I, I don't really know much about cars, and uh, but it's something I love. You're getting there. Yeah, I'm learning. So Jason, Jason. Goes I've been a car guy for a though. while. Um, so I this is a uh, 2006 uh, Evolution Nine for you guys. Uh, so that's the uh, 4G63 Turbo, uh, all wheel drive. It's not a Galant. No, it's a. Uh, <laughs> It's a car that, um, so I had a, an Evolution 10, uh, which a lot of you guys know about, we've talked about in the past, uh, before we moved up here to Philadelphia. Uh, I sold that car when we left. Uh, it's been a while. I knew I was going to replace it with something soon. This is actually, uh, so this color, Apex Silver, um, in this model, in the Evo 9, was like the first Evo that I ever rode in. So I think it's kind of cool that I got an Apex Silver one. But uh, it, it was the first one I fell in love with that made me want to get an Evo. This car is pretty uh, 63,000 miles for 2006. It's pretty clean. Mm-hmm. I would say, you know, it was garage kept, original owner. It's it's definitely a premium um, example of the car. It will be receiving uh, quite a bit more horsepower in the coming months, and uh, it'll change from what, how you see it now. But uh, yeah, I'm people ex- <laughs> extremely happy. So the the viewers hate my car, think I'm an ass for for buying that, and they love your car. But I mean. Your car is in almost every way better than mine, except the fact that I love mine. And that's the I point. Love, I, are you saying I don't love my Evona? No, I'm saying the only reason oh, okay. why my car is good for me is because I love it. But uh, let's see here. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that, yeah, it's embarrassing for me to drive that. But the thing is, first of all, I don't give a shit, dude. I, have, I do a lot of things that are embarrassing. Basically, I can drive that car and wear my Anonymo with double middle fingers and I don't care. Right. It's a lot of fun for me, and it didn't cost me any money. Whereas your car is definitely more of an investment, but it's, I mean, with it infinitely better than mine. I think, what, how much horsepower? Uh, right now, it's its about 400 wheel horsepower. Um, we're going to get her up there, though. The thing, the difference, though, is where, where where's your car located? Yeah. <laughs> Mine's Quick. parked next to a palm tree right now, guys. Uh, so I think it makes it better. <laughs> He's just gonna stab me after the show. All right, all right, guys. So that was the show. Uh, I gave you a little insight into what we're doing on the weekends and having fun with. Um, send us more feedback. We do get the emails, even if we don't reply. It doesn't mean we didn't read it. If we think it, uh, an email re- warrants a reply, we'll go ahead and reply. Don't get offended if we don't reply, though. We certainly did re- read the email. And we appreciate some of the input. If you write an email that's, you know, seven paragraphs long, we'll probably read it, but. There's probably no chance for us to reply because we don't what have is time. It that, what is it you reply? What's the, the abbreviation for? 
Too long, didn't read? Oh, yeah, TLDR. Yeah. That's Josh in a nutshell right there. <laughs> exactly. That's All right, me. guys. Appreciate you logging in on Thursday. Uh, third week of the top fives. Uh, I think next week, uh, hopefully, we see some different stuff. Oh, I won't be in next um, week, actually. Oh, you're not going to be here? No. All so right, cool. We'll so definitely log in Harrison for that now. show because it'll, be, uh, it'll be more entertaining. It'll be so, so this. exciting. And... Uh, Hopefully you guys enjoyed the the car talk. I know a lot of you guys in chat and a lot of you guys that watch the pot, you know, the, the video and listen to the podcast like cars too. Vtech, um, want to go ahead and outroll on the poll, I guess. Oh yeah, let's we see what the we poll is. Pan ride by a landslide. Ooh, eighty-one yeah. percent. Yeah, I'm not gonna even. Really I agree with you that on one. that. Yeah, you know, we can agree. This you this uh, there you go. Belongs at the bottom of the ocean apparently. With... Yeah, whatever. It's listen, they're both equally absurd watches. So, all right, guys, don't ever, don't forget to uh, subscribe, have your friends subscribe, check us out on Facebook, on Instagram, on uh, Friendster, MySpace, Jason's on Grinder.